Hello folks, Paul here, UK Rails and More. Welcome back for another review of uh, Class 47. Uh, this one's in rail freight distribution livery. Uh, and this one's going to be a new uh, member of the fleet for the new layout build, which starts later this month. Uh, if you want to know anything more about the uh, plans for the new layout and you're new to the channel, uh, then have a look. There's uh, another video uh, all about the plans uh, which I've uploaded recently. So please feel free to check that one out. Uh, if you do like the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Out of the new layout build, I've got another couple of reviews coming soon. And also I will be doing another planning and scenic inspiration uh, visit. That one's going to be looking at the Peak District uh, around some of the quarry areas of Buxton and uh, the Millersdale, Monsaldale line. Uh, so as long as the weather's OK, uh, I'll be doing that one fairly soon. So anyway, enough uh, from me. Let's uh, get this one unboxed and I'll bring you back for a closer look. Bye for now. Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, so what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at a Backman's Class 47, number 47306. Uh, this one's in the rail freight distribution sector livery, uh, and it's called the Sapper. Uh, it's a special from Kurnow uh, Model Railway Centre, uh, and I'm pleased to have this one, which I'll use mainly for the modern era layout. Uh, this will be part of the fleet for the preservation railway. Uh, so it'd be used for things like uh, diesel uh, galas and things like that with some old passenger stock. Uh, a bit like the stuff that you see at the East Lanks Railway. Um, if you've not seen them, have a look at the East Lank Railway videos and uh, you'll see the kind of idea I've got behind it. The other idea I had for this particular locomotive uh, is it gives me the potential to operate the layout as an 80s, 90s era layout as well. Uh, where this could be used for freight traffic along with the uh, previously reviewed uh, Backman's Coal Sector Livery Class 37. Okay folks, so let's take a more detailed look at this rather nice locomotive. Okay, so first of all the front end uh, points out that this is actually a, a weathered version, uh, but it's a very light weathering, so um, that probably would be quite acceptable as well as something that's uh, just recently perhaps been purchased by the preservation layout and it needs a clean up maybe after a long trip from another preservation layout somewhere else so it's just a bit dirty than usual high standards it would be up to but anyway we've got lots of nice front detail there so we've got the windscreen wipers uh, we've got the aerial on the roof there uh, you can just see the weathering there from the uh, windscreen wipers a slight dirt that's showing on them so that's very good we've got the usual uh, warning signs overhead cable warning signs etc a nice detail at the front end okay now this one it's not got the standard coupling at the front end it's got the very detailed coupling uh, sorry the detailed uh, realistic authentic couplings at the front so that's very good but you do have the option of uh, adding the normal couplings as well We've got some nice weathering detail on the buffers. Okay, so very nice front end. Just working our way around. We can see uh, the number 47306. And we've also got the driver in there as well, which is a nice little uh, add-on that Batman always uh, provide. Very nice bogey details. All the springs, the axle boxes. Painted yellow. Yeah, very nice uh, bogey details there. I really like these uh, rail freight distribution liveries. Uh, for any one of the generation that remembers them, um, I'm sure you agree they're very nice locomotives that take you back to the day. The detail on this one, the, uh, the bodywork. And the colour in the paint job is very nicely done. Okay, there's the distribution sector. The other one I reviewed was the coal sector livery. 
And again, that was very nice as well. We've got the orange line running along the top. So moving along, where we've got uh, the battery boxes and fuel tanks again, very nice detail in there. Where we've got the gauges, we can zoom into that. We've even got the needles, so that's very, very good. Okay. And this one's got the very large uh, rail freight distribution, which grabbed my attention to it when I saw it. I thought that really looks good. Um, and also there we've got the nameplate. You also do get the metal uh, nameplate to add in, if you wish, uh, to put that on. And what I was particularly impressed with this one, the sapper, is just the level of detail above there. So you can even see the uh, Elizabeth Royal uh, arms and the, even the crown on the top, which when you're not looking at that through the zoom is incredibly tiny uh, to see. So that's really impressive that, that they've got that down nicely. So a very good feature. Okay, and over to the other cab. I don't know if I did the other cab as much justice as I perhaps should have done, but let's make up for it here because this is obviously very similar. So the difference is with that one, of course, you've got the uh, distribution sector uh, patterning along the side, the symbol, there we go. Uh, also, you've got the cab details, you've got the nice handrails, the metal handrails, and that uh, the metal uh, anti-slip kind of uh, galvanizing. Okay. Uh, and again, we've got some very nice additional detail there. Just bringing round to the other cab where we've got the conventional couplings. As I say, you do get the other that option for the other end of the box, but it's nice that the, I think it's nice they provide it uh, with the uh, the option where you can actually see what it looks like the very detailed version on the other end. Uh, but you've got the choice to use it if you want to shunt it more and use it for coupling up to trains from different ends. I probably would leave it like this, and uh, but again, that's very nice. We've got the various lights on the front and the handrails, and we've even got uh, there some, looks like some steps as well, which is very good. And again, the weathering and the aerial. There's just a view for the uh, the locomotive at this end, where you can see that rail freight distribution and the sapper symbol as well. Okay, so moving up, let's have a look at the roof. We'll just get this to focus in. There we go. So yeah, very nice rivet details on the various hatches. We've got the grills on the side which are very good. And more, more grills looking down. Okay, try and do this nice and steady. We've got the exhaust on the other side. And the various hatches. And again, we've got the features of these very nice uh, air exhaust uh, cooling fans, not cool, exhaust fans, cooling fans. So uh, we've got those, we can see. They're very nice detail and all arounds. And we've got two of them on this one as well, which is nice, uh, nice feature of the Class 37. You can even see the, on the edges of various uh, hinges there, uh, very detailed. And again, the grills on the other end. So that brings us around to the front end. And again, with the driver. I'll try and get this a bit steadier on the camera work. And this driver's not got his hand quite on the controls there. Let's see. Yeah, it's a really nice front end, that. So yeah, very pleased with this model. Okay, folks, we get the, uh, the usual box of goodies there as well, the different options for the different types of coupling 
uh, that you can put on the various uh, brake pipes, etc., snow plows, and the signs. Okay. Okay, folks, and with this one, you also get the uh, certificate with its individual number. Uh, as it is a limited edition, but uh, needless to say, this one has worked uh, rail freight distribution. Uh, it was named the uh, Sapper, uh, and it's also been uh, used in, uh, presented at various uh, diesel galas, which is what I want to uh, use it for primarily on this layout. Okay, folks, as usual with Beckman, they come with uh, a brief history of the Class 47 on the back of the box, so for those interested, uh, towards the end of the 1950s, British Railways began planning a second generation of diesel locomotives. After investigating several prototypes, BR decided to place an order with Brush Engineering for 20 pilot locomotives during February 1961. The resulting design became the iconic Brush Type 4 diesel locomotive, a practical, versatile design with a very distinctive cab. Powered with a Sulzer engine and initially rated at 2,750 horsepower, the locomotive could achieve a top speed of 75 miles per hour with a tractive effort of 55,000 pounds. Building commenced in January 1962 and the first locomotive D1500 appeared in late September of the same year with test runs on the London Midland region and Western regions. The design was a success and BR went on to order a total of 512 with continuous production throughout through to early 1967, forming the largest single class of mainline diesel locomotives in the UK. During this time and subsequent years, several variations appeared with an increase in speed and tractive effort to 95 miles per hour and 62,000 pounds respectively. Originally fitted with four character train head codes, these changed to marker lights with the addition of high intensity lights and roof aerials in the late 1980s. Other variations involved the fitting of different types of steam heating boiler for early BR coaching stock, later replaced with electric train heating for use with modern rolling stock. The numbering system started with four figures but changed to five with the introduction of the TOPS coding system which saw the locomotives classified as Class 47 diesels with variations such as 470, 472, 473, 474 and 477. By the end of the 1990s, half of the Class 47 fleet had been withdrawn or scrapped, sadly. 33 have been converted into Class 57 locomotives and several have been preserved, including the original D1500 now numbered 47401. Uh, an interesting point there where it said the class 57. Uh, I'm also uh, very pleased that I've got one of those as well. So that's part of the DRS fleet, uh, Chad Vara, uh, which um, if you've not seen that, I've also done a review and a garden running session on that one. Uh, the DRS is going to feature heavily in the new layout because there's going to be a DRS TMD, which I'm looking forward very much to building. Okay, so that concludes the uh, review uh, and also uh, could call it Meet the Fleet, I suppose, uh, for the up and coming layout that's starting towards the end of this month. Uh, prior to that, I'm going to have another scenic inspiration and planning uh, video coming where I'm going to be looking at the uh, Monseldale Millersdale lines and the Peak District Quarry area uh, and some of the nice specific uh, kind of uh, landscapes that you get characterised in that area. Uh, also, there's going to be another review uh, before the new layout build, which starts at the end of this month, all being well. Okay, folks, so I'll wrap it up for there. So thanks very much for watching if you've watched this point. If you're interested in being kept fully up to date with the new layout build uh, and all of the other reviews and projects I'm going to be doing, uh, along with some aviation stuff, then uh, just please uh, consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, hit the notification bell and that will notify you of all future videos. Uh, if you don't want to do that, no problem. Thanks very much for just watching the video. Uh, all I'd ask if you've enjoyed it, just give it a thumbs up because that really helps the channel. Okay, bye for now. I'll speak to you very soon. Take care and stay safe. Bye for now.